Increasing the number of nuclear power stations often is suggested as a means of reducing the emission of greenhouse gases while generating electricity. Nuclear power stations, whether they are centralized large reactors or decentralized small modular reactors, indeed produce essentially no greenhouse gases while they are in operation. We know that all methods used to generate electric energy, including renewables such as solar and wind energy, have environmental impacts. However, the environmental impacts of nuclear power are unique and present significant challenges. I will discuss the challenges associated with uranium mining and milling in this video. The nuclear fuel cycle is complicated and presents environmental challenges at each stage. In this video, I focus only on the beginning stage of the nuclear fuel cycle, namely uranium mining and milling. Nuclear reactors need fissionable material that can sustain a chain reaction by producing and capturing neutrons. Examples of such materials include uranium and plutonium. Most nuclear reactors use a moderator to lower the kinetic energy of the neutrons and increase the probability that fission will occur. This allows reactors to use material with far lower concentration of fissile isotopes than are needed for nuclear weapons. Most commercial reactors use ordinary water as the neutron moderator. Naturally occurring uranium consists primarily of two isotopes, uranium-238 and uranium-235, with 99.28% of the metal being U-238, while only 0.71% is U-235. The number refers to the isotope's atomic mass number, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the atomic nucleus. A U-235 atom has a high probability of undergoing fission when it's struck by a slow neutron. When the U-235 fissions, it splits into lighter atoms, releasing energy and more neutrons. The atoms produced in the fission, typically a very long-lived, highly radioactive isotopes. In order to maintain a self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction, the percentage of U-235 in the, in the nuclear fuel must be enriched to between 3 and 5%. Uranium ores found in nature typically contain small percentages of uranium oxides. These ores can be mined by conventional open pit and underground mining techniques. Uranium ores found in the United States typically contain from 0.05 to 0.3% uranium oxide. Uranium mining is the first step in the nuclear fuel cycle. The second step is called milling. In the milling process, the ores are ground to produce particles of a uniform size. These particles are then chemically treated to leach out the uranium oxide. The milling process produces a dry powder called yellow cake, which essentially is uranium trioxide, U3O8. The yellow cake is shipped off to conversion plants where it's usually converted to uranium hexafluoride for later enrichment. The uranium milling process produces a large amount of waste material called tailings. The leaching process is not 100% efficient, so these tailings contain substantial amounts of U-238, which is a radioactive element. It has a half-life that is nearly as long as the age of the Earth, and because of its very long half-life, it is in equilibrium with all the daughter elements produced during its decay, including the gaseous element radon-222. Problems arise when these milling tailings are not adequately sequestered from the environment. If they are not properly isolated from the environment, 
they can end up as dust that can be blown around by the wind or they can end up polluting aquifers that are used to supply water for domestic uses. The tailings often contain other toxic elements such as selenium, which is not radioactive, but nevertheless can be dangerous if it enters the water supply. The proper way to handle the tailings is to provide impervious barriers under the tailing piles so that no dangerous material can enter the water supply and to provide covers over the tailing piles so that the wind can't move dust from these piles. Three types of radiation are emitted as U-238 decays. These include beta rays, which are just electrons, alpha particles, which are helium nuclei, and gamma rays, which are quanta of electromagnetic radiation, like X-rays, but more energetic. The radon-222 in the decay chain po uh, poses a special problem. It's a gaseous element that can ex escape into the air, attach itself to small dust particles, and end up being breathed into a person's lungs. The subsequent emission of alpha particles can cause a lung cancer to develop. This has turned out to be a major problem for uranium miners who worked in the underground mines where high levels of radon-222 were found. An article published in the August 8, 2022 edition of the Los Angeles Times, written in collaboration with ProPublica, focused on the environmental problems caused by the Homestake uranium mining and milling operation near the small communities of Murray Acres and Broadview Acres near the town of Grants, New Mexico, and the nearby village of Milan, New Mexico. The Homestake uranium mining and milling operation produced some 22.5 million tons of radioactive mill waste. Uranium-238 from the Homestake waste piles has contaminated the groundwater supply in the area, and substantial amounts of radon gas leaked into the air near the Murray Acres and Broadview Acres settlements. Many residents of the two settlements contracted cancers and other ailments linked to their exposure to these toxic elements. In addition, the plume of U-238 contaminated groundwater is moving towards the larger communities of Milan, New Mexico and Grants, New Mexico. The Homestake uranium mill operated from 1958 to 1990. Homestake went out of business and its operations were taken over by a Canadian mining giant called Barrick Gold. Under pressure from the U.S. government, the operators undertook several cleanup operations, but these were not entirely successful and the current owners of the mill tailings have been buying out the remaining homeowners and they are posing, proposing to hand over the contaminated property in the area to the federal government for final cleanup. While Homestake was one of the larger uranium and mining and milling operations in the United States, there are some 50 similar operations in the country that have produced some 250 million tons of uranium mill waste with similar contamination problems. At this time, it looks like the federal government will end up being responsible for the cleanup of the contamination caused by these uranium mining and milling operations. And it also looks like at least part of the cost to do this will have to be borne by the taxpayers. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this video informative. Some of the information I presented is quite technical. If you need any further explanation, don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments. I will do my best to answer your questions. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe now. Thanks again for watching.